One of the things I think that uh, we in our human nature struggle with, uh, either from time to time or maybe some more than others, but to some degree, I think we all struggle with what to do when we are being wronged by others. Um, you know, our, our human instinct is to fight back, to get payback, to um, take it into our own hands and to get vengeance for ourselves, uh, to repay others, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and what they do to us. But the thing is, is God calls us to a higher way of thinking, a higher standard of living. God actually does not want, nor does he let us avenge ourselves. Um, time and time again, uh, really throughout the Old Testament, and then uh, maybe we're even more familiar with the times in the New Testament that we're actually taught not to repay evil for evil. We're not to seek an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We're not to take vengeance into our own hands. But as hard as that is and as strange as that may be to our human way of thinking and sometimes the natural emotions and instincts that get stirred up in us, it's okay to not avenge ourselves because... The Lord says he will do it himself. When the Lord tells us not to avenge ourselves, when the Lord tells us not to repay evil for evil, he at the same time tells us that vengeance, the Lord says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. The Lord tells us to be still, to seek peace and pursue it, to, to, to give love, to, to hold back from doing evil, even though, yes, there may be some who are, are doing wrong. And that's not to say that, you know, there is not to be some, you know, standard of law and justice and punishment in our society and world today. But on, a, on an individual basis, on a personal level, what God expects of us is to put our faith and our trust and our hope in Him and let God deal with all the all the people who may be wronging us and uh, pray for them, of course. Um, certainly that's a lesson for another day. But ultimately to trust that if there are those who are doing wrong and doing evil, God says to leave it in his hands. God will take care of it. And we can take strength and comfort and hope in that. And knowing that God will avenge. God will give justice God will take care of those who do evil. And that's what we actually see David knew a thing or two about that. As David strived to live his life for the Lord and put his faith and trust in the Lord. And there were certainly times David could have taken vengeance into his own hands, but he didn't. And there were many times that David was being affected and persecuted and um, harmed by his or threatened by his enemies. But David constantly put his faith and trust in the Lord, knowing that the Lord would save, the Lord would avenge, the Lord would take care of whatever needed to be taken care of in his own time and in his own way. And that's what we see in Psalm 35. If you want to turn there with me, let's, let's think about Psalm 35. Let's listen to what David is saying here about the Lord and about our attitude and our reliance and trust in God and our peace of mind and knowing that the Lord will avenge and praying for the Lord to avenge and take justice on those who refuse to repent, on those who choose to continue to do evil and mistreat others in sin. So let's look at this together. Psalm 35, beginning in verse 1, when David starts by saying to the Lord, contend for me or plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. David asks the Lord, then fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, 
I am your salvation. You know, David calling upon the Lord to help him against his enemies and those trying to attack him and harm him. But I think it's powerful that he says in really a a reflective sense of reminding himself, you know, say to my soul or wanting the Lord to remind David and say to David, David, I am your salvation. And for David to remember, God is my salvation, which is what we all need to remember to hear from the Lord, to repeat to ourselves, the Lord is our avenger, the Lord is our salvation. And so David goes on to say, let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly, and let his net that he has hidden catch himself. Into that very destruction let him fall. And my soul, David says, knowing that the Lord, I mean, David's praying to the Lord. David's uh, calling on the Lord for help, for salvation, and he, and, and for the Lord to you know, turn back, turn away David's enemies. He says, and then my soul, verse 9, my soul will be joyful in the Lord. It will rejoice in his salvation. All my bones will say, Lord, who is like you? delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him, who is like the Lord who saves. What a beautiful thought. Fierce witnesses, verse 11. Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But... As for me, when they were sick, uh, this is powerful right here. Let's pay attention, of course, to all of it. But notice what David says, the kind of heart we're to have, the kind of heart that Jesus teaches us to have, the kind of heart that God has always taught to have. David says, but as for me, while they were doing evil to me, even though I was doing good, he says, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer would return to my own heart. I paced about as though he were my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. David says, you know, even though they were doing evil to him. Again, David remained with a humble heart and praying for his enemies was still wanting to do good, even though he was being wronged. Fast forward, I mean, really not even fast forward, but throughout the Old Testament, and even in the law of Moses, God's people were taught to do good to their enemies. Jesus teaches us today to do good to our enemies. And the kind of heart David had here. But then, sadly, as David It's reflecting on his enemies. They're thinking back. He says, but in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me and I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease. With ungodly mockers at feasts, they gnashed at me with their teeth. And so while David was stumbling, while David was having adversity, they weren't praying for him. They were seeking to attack. And so then David says, verse 17, Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their destructions, my precious life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Let them not rejoice over me who are wrongfully my enemies, nor let them wink with the eye who hate me without a cause. Excuse me, for they do not speak peace. They do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful matters against the quiet ones in the land. 
They also opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. But this you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silence. O Lord, do not be far from me. Stir up yourself and awake to my vindication, to my cause, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness. And let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, ah, so we would have it. Let them not say, we have swallowed him up. Instead, he says, let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who exalt themselves against me. But let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue will speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. David was dealing with many people who, who especially wanted to do David wrong for, for no reason. At least in the sense and that I think we get from other Psalms of David. I mean, David sometimes says, you know, Lord, if I've... If I've done wrong and I deserve, you know, to be, you know, harmed and punished, then so be it. But there were many times like this that David's talking about in Psalm 35 where David's not done wrong to these people. David is trying to be at peace. David is trying to do good. But there are people who are just evil-minded, have ugly hearts who just want to do evil, who are jealous, who are hateful, who are envious, who who just want to do harm and attack and oppress the poor and needy, oppress those who do good. But David is putting his faith and his trust in the Lord. And David is trying not to take it into his own hands. David is trying to still pray and seek to do good and be at peace and even while others continue to say things and do things about him. And, and he's praying to the Lord for help, for deliverance, for protection, for salvation. And I think this psalm should be a lesson to us today and an encouragement that maybe when we're dealing with people that are unfair, that are unkind, that are unloving, that are unjust, that, that are against us for no good reason, that there are just people who are spiteful, people who are, who are hateful, envious, jealous, people who just want to pick a fight. When there are people who are unreasonable, when there are people who are unappeasable, when there are people who do not seek peace or what is good. Well, the reminder is, number one, do not repay evil for evil. Do not stoop to their level. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And then pray for, your, for those people who are doing wrong. And seek to do good to them, no matter what. And ultimately, in all of this, trusting in the Lord, leaving it in the Lord's hands, knowing the Lord will save us and deliver us and comfort us and strengthen us. And number two, if those who are doing evil persist and continue to do evil and have that heart and attitude, then one day they're going to answer to God and let God take care. God will deal with it. God has promised to deal with it. So like David, let's trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, our avenger. Trust that he knows, that he sees, that he cares, that he hears, and God will take care of it. Although it may be hard to see right now when we're in the, the midst of, of oppression of some sort, whatever may be going on, look above, look past it, and see that God is in control, that God will deal with all the bad stuff. God will take care of it. But we've got to put our faith and hope and trust in the Lord and be who God wants us to be, even when others aren't. Take heart, take strength, take courage, 
be at peace, seek to do good, pursue peace, pursue love, trust in the Lord, and all will be well. God bless.